Hello everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and my craft table. So today's tutorial is all about the Cricut Mug Press and Infusible Ink. So I recently made, I'll just show you, I made a mug for one of my nieces and she's into basketball and this is how it turned out. It was so cute. So I wanted to do another one for my other niece because she is a cheerleader. You may need, well, scissors and some tweezers. Probably not a weeding tool because the infusible ink is very delicate. You will need a lint brush, the infusible ink of your choice, and then um, the Cricut infusible ink mugs. Now these are the 12 ounce mugs. They do come in 15 ounce mugs. Let's go ahead and go over to Design Space and get the project started I'm in Cricut Design Space. And the first thing I'm going to do is go up here to the search bar and I'm going to search for mug design setup. And then I'm going to come down here to the project row and I'm going to click on view all and up at the top, I'm going to actually change this to Cricut. And that way I only get um, what I'm actually looking for. And you can see all these cute little um, deals. But what I'm looking for is this right here, Mug Design Setup. And once you find this, I do suggest that you bookmark it. When you click on that, you'll get an option for whatever size and whatever type of decor edge that you want. So like this is a straight edge. Okay. And then the template is there, but you can do a straight edge, a beveled edge, a ripped edge. I love the ripped edge. Then we'll have a scalloped edge, wavy and a zigzag. So you just choose the size and the type of edge you want and you hit customize. Okay, I actually already have this up on my design space because pre prior to the filming, I had created a sweet little mug and I wanted to show you how I did this. So this is the one that we're going to emulate and I'll show you exactly how I did that. When you open up the mug design setup, you'll get something that looks like this. So the very first thing that I want to do is I want to do the words. Okay. Then I want to do the pom pom and then I want to do the megaphone. All right. And I'm going to bring these over. These will be our little inspiration. Okay. And you don't want to mess with this sizing because this is sized for the mug. Before we go to actually cut this out. We will hide these red mugs that you see up here. That's just kind of a, a layer behind that shows you where your centers are. So this is the center of the mug. And then this is the center of the side when the handle is on the left. And this is the center uh, on the side when the handle is on the right. First things first, we are going to change the color. So we'll go over to the layers panel and I'm going to grab just this top layer of the infusible ink template. And I'm going to change that. Now her team is lavender, so I'll change that to lavender. These tabs right here, we want them to be cut out. So this is actually something that we're going to want, but we're, we're not going to color that. We're just going to leave it clear. Okay, so the first thing is let's make the megaphone. I'm going to go into shapes and I'm going to grab a triangle then I am going to grab one of these half circles. Then I'm going to grab one of these little tic tac looking things. And then I'm going to grab two rectangles. Actually, I think I'm going to grab a rectangle and a square. So the first thing to making a megaphone is we're going to turn our triangle and I'm actually going to blow it up a little bit like that. Okay. And I'm going to turn the half circle. Then I need to resize this half circle, this hemisphere here. And just adjust it so that 
when I butt it up against the triangle, I don't have any gaps. So it looks like I need to rotate my, my triangle just slightly. And move it over and move it up. Okay. All right, I think that's good. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab both of those images and I'm going to weld them together because that will be the megaphone. Okay, so now it's one big cohesive piece. Let's take this square right here. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice off where I think I want to put the other end of the megaphone probably about right here. Okay, so I will select both of those, come over here and I'm going to hit slice. And we'll pull all of these away, just like that. We can actually get rid of those. And then we're gonna take this little Tic Tac looking guy. I'm gonna make him about half as wide and I'm probably gonna to have to shrink them just a little bit. And then we're gonna turn. So I'm gonna rotate by just dragging the corner. And then I'm gonna put it right here. And I'm going to double check that I like the placement and that I like how wide it is. Okay, so if I zoom out, that looks pretty good if I zoom out. All right, select both of those go over to combine and go to weld. Now I have the megaphone, okay? And you can make it skinnier, you can make it longer, okay? Kind of however you prefer. All right, so now on to the handle. I'm actually going to duplicate this rectangle. So what I did is I selected the rectangle, I hit control C, and then I did control V to put it on the canvas. I need this rectangle to be smaller, and I wanna bring it on top of the other one, and I basically am trying to look and see like how much of a cutout I would want because I want a, a handle, okay? So you could make the sides a little skinnier and then make the bottom a little bigger. Okay, I'm going to select both and I'm going to align horizontally. So now I know that that's exactly in the middle. Select both of them, go over to slice, and I'm going to pull all of these off. Okay, and then of course I don't need my handle to be really, really long. Then I'm going to bring the handle up here. It needs to be tilted ever so slightly. Okay, so now we have our handle, and I'm going to select both of those and weld one more time. We have made a megaphone. So that's one of our elements. All right, so the next thing is we need text, or four actually. And I'm going to move all of them over here. All right, so the first one is EAT. And we want capital letters. We're going to go and change the font. Look for TEAM. And I like this home team light. You could also do athlete. You could do stencil. Like you could really choose any font that you like. And then we'll do another one that says sleep. There I actually need all of these to be the same size. So this is a font of 72 size. This font size needs to be 72. All right, so we'll make them all the same size in a minute. So we have eat, we have sleep, we need repeat. We're going to change the font right now while we're thinking about it. And I'm wanting just, I'm just putting all of these at 72. Okay, so we have eat, we have sleep, we have 
a repeat, and we need a cheer. Okay, so for cheer, we can choose any kind of scripty fun font that we want. And let's see if we can find a one that's really, um, really cool looking. And I can even go to system and browse my computer and see if there's one there that I like. I could go into my bookmarks, more fun, more cheerleader, cheerleader-ish. That's a little better. All right. So now what you're going to notice is that all of these letters are separate from each other. And so we're actually going to um, get these to be closer. Fantastic. Okay. So we have our cheer. All right. So now let's start putting this together. So we need a repeat, and we need our sleep. So repeat is at 154.91. I'm going to change this one. I could have also just resized the cheer, but it's OK. So eat, sleep. Cheer and repeat. OK, so this is the gist of how I made this one over here. These are definitely not aligned. OK, so they're just kind of in place. So I'm going to select all four of them. And I want to go to align left. And then I'm actually going to do distribute vertically and see how it changes with the spacing. OK, so you can see where it kind of makes these all come together. But the eat is definitely not part of the group, so we're going to bring that down. I don't like the vertical placement that the design space chose for me, so I'm actually going to just change it itself and have it where I want it. And then we'll go, I think that is good. And then we're going to go to align and align left. All right, so the next thing is I am going to attach all of those words together because I do not want them to move or get cut out. All right, so we have the eat, sleep, cheer, repeat. We have the megaphone. We need a pom-pom. So I'm going to actually go over to images. And, and I'm going to do cheer, pom, and see what comes up. Quite a you just find one that you like. I like this little one here. Add to canvas. There it is, populate it in. And then I'm just going to resize it down. All right, so that is basically the element that I created earlier. And that is how you do that. So we did use the image of the pom pom. We used um, four text boxes, chose the font, and changed the size. All of these need to get selected and we need to hit attach. Okay. And that, now they're one cohesive unit. Next, we made the megaphone. All right. And we'll, we'll resize all of these in just a moment. In fact, you'll be able to see. We're just going to resize it down and then we'll put it where it needs to go. And then we have our megaphone. So it'll go like this. So the only element that is missing now is a name. OK. And this one, I'm going to do another text box. We could use the word Anna. All right, so whatever font you want and whatever name you need. OK, so we're going to put these two together. And I'm going to make the name white so I can see where it is. We need to turn Anna's name a little more. Don't know if I like that font because it's a little hard to read. So let's find one that's a little more friendly. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. That's a great choice. 
Maybe I should bookmark that one. Okay, so here is Anna. And I think that placement is good right there. So I'm going to select both of them. And then I'm actually, let's see, I'm going to hit slice. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. We have Anna. I'm going to move her off to the side. We have Anna here. Move that off to the side. And then we have that part there. Now, for the magic, we're going to put the megaphone on this side of the purple wavy and get that, you know, centered, lined up where we think it is going to be. This size actually looks really good, so I'm not going to mess with that size. Let me bring this down. I need to weld this so that it is one layer. I'm going to select the purple layer and the Eat Sleep Cheer. And I'm going to hit a line and I'm going to center vertically. So definitely this is now in the center from the top to the bottom. While it is still selected, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit slice. Okay, let's see. We are going to remove this one and this one. And then you could save these off to the side and use them for something else. But what you have now is you actually have the uh, infusible ink sheet. All of these elements will be weeded out. Okay, so they will get weeded out. Then I need to find my megaphone and I need to bring that forward. There it is. Okay. And then I'm going to slice this one. So I selected the megaphone and I selected the purple wavy layer, go to a line, center vertically. Okay, now I am going to hit slice. Okay, and then we'll just pull all those off and there you go. You have the megaphone with the name. So the megaphone will be weeded out. And then you have here, eat, sleep, cheer, repeat. All right. So that is how you create your own megaphone with a name and how you put together some text messages with some picture elements and slice them out. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and delete all of those. And I will, I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to delete all of those because I just need the one that I made previous and I'm going to hide both of these elements before you do anything. So in your mug design setup, okay, you want to take this layer that has the red mugs and select it in your layers panel and you want to hide it because you don't want that to be cut out. The other thing you want to do is you want to grab the two layers. Um, you want to grab the layer that is purple and then this outline, you want to grab that layer too and you want to attach them. Okay. So, that way everything is going to cut out the way it needs to. Let's go to the overhead camera and get the mug ready for the mug press. Okay, so back to the overhead camera. This is the ripped edge that I wanted to show you earlier. I just love it. I use this one a lot actually. You definitely want to make sure your hands are clean and dry. You don't want any oil, perfume, lotion, anything because it will mess up your infusible ink sheet. So in, in the box, okay, the mugs come super nicely wrapped. They have a film, uh, like a little plastic bag on them, and then they're wrapped in bubble wrap. And what I like about this is because you can rewrap your um, mug and put it in a gift bag. You could make a box 
And if you don't need any of this, you've got bubble wrap or something else. So here is our mug. And they are a pretty nice quality mug. I really like them. Now your infusible ink. When you open the box, which you do want to save, it comes in a bag. And you do want to save this black bag. Definitely keep the black bag. So we want to keep the infusible ink. We want to keep it in the dark. We want to keep it dry. All right, so inside the package is some information. One of these little desk packages. This is a um, little swatch of material that you can practice on. Okay, so now you can see these are the infusible ink sheets. You can see a com huge color difference. The sheets are really muted, and when they are done being pressed, the color is super vibrant. All right, so you get two sheets, and then you get some butcher paper. Since I'm using the mug press, I won't need to use the butcher paper. So just make sure that you roll everything up. And you're going to put it back in the black bag with the little packet and then put it back in the box. You've got to put this on the mat. Right, so once we get that on the mat, then you just want to use your brayer and go over and get it pressed down really good, just like, like this. And Okay, so we really want to try and not really touch it much after that point. Okay, so now that this is prepped and ready to go, we're going to go back over to Design Space and get our selections for cutting. Okay, so now we're going to click Make. And you'll see that um, it shows up on a cutting mat. Okay, the one thing that you have to remember to do is you have to mirror your image. So just like if we were using uh, HTV and putting this on a shirt or some kind of other surface, we do have to mirror it as well. I hit continue. It'll connect to the maker. All right, so the next thing is I'm going to choose infusible ink transfer sheet. Now I already have it bookmarked, but you could go to browse all materials infusible ink transfer and then it gives you a nice little warning it says make sure mirror is turned on and the material is ink side up all right and I'm gonna go ahead and do more pressure and my fine point blade is already loaded in clamp B so now what I'm gonna do is get my mat cut out okay so we are all cut out and now it is time for us to read out our design so I am going to turn the mat over just like any other vinyl and I'm going to pull away and here it is and I'm just going to set this aside because I don't need it and then here is the sheet of infusible ink and you can see it'll go really nicely on the mug. Now, as far as the weeding is concerned, what you do, I don't know if you can hear, this is the cracking, okay? You basically want to go through and you want to get it to crack up. Usable ink is very easy to weed, okay? So on our design, we wanna pull these tabs off, but I'm gonna wait to the end to do that because those are sticky and they'll go around And then I'm going to weed with my fingers. Okay, so going back into design space and referencing the um, image was very helpful because once I found the tiny little piece that needed to come up, actually all of it came up and we were left with what um, needed to remain. 
So here we go. We're going to pull off the last of the two tabs. And the clear part of this carrier sheet is sticky, just like any other transfer tape would be. Do not use scotch tape or any, just you have to use heat resistant tape. And it, it actually is not as expensive as you would think. In fact, I think I got this, uh, this one at Hobby Lobby for just a couple of dollars. So the next thing you want to do is use a lint roller. Even though you, I just took it out of the, I want to make sure that I have any, any, anything. So I like to put my hand in the cup and then run the lint roller. And I go horizontal and I go vertical. I place it to where the handle is facing me. And then I try and get it as even as possible. One side down like this. And then I pull that other side super, super tight. This side is on there. Okay, and then what I do is I go around. I usually don't use this small of tape. I usually use bigger ones, but I basically go around the top and the bottom of the mug. So usually I grab a pretty big piece like this. Yep. One little section at a time, I just start pressing this on here because you don't want any gaps. You want to make sure that the surface of your mug and that transfer sheet are fully adhered to each other. All right, so it looks like everything is good to go. Okay, so let's bring in the mug press. Okay, so this is the Cricut mug press, and once you plug it in and power it on, it will warm up, and then the light will turn green. And it is really, really hot. Like, when I put my hands over, my hands are actually kind of cold right now. This feels really good. <laughs> it is still really cold outside for the end of March. All right, so we are going to stick the mug down into this area, and we'll push the door down, and as soon as we do that, the press will start doing its thing, and you'll see the lights as it moves up here this toward this side. You can see the progression, and then what will happen is we'll take the mug back out, and this handle will actually be pretty cool, but it's always good to have some um, heat resistant gloves if you have them. But as long as this handle doesn't come in contact with that green part, you're good. And then we will set it here on our easy press mat. And we will let it cool for about oh, 10, well, probably 15 minutes or so. And I usually like to put my handle a little bit over this way because this green door is going to come through here. And I also make sure that the edge of the, I make sure that this edge is fully in contact with that green part there. Okay. All right, here we go. Okay, so it is about halfway. You can see that by the blinking lights. When it gets to this fifth, light, it will beep at us to let us know that it is done. Okay, so it just beeped and you can see that it is flashing and it is ready to go. So we are going to open and then very carefully, this handle is cool, but you need to exercise extreme caution when you pull it out. I'm going to lift this out just like that and I'm going to put it here on the easy press mat and I'm going to let this sit for about oh a good 20 minutes. Let me turn this off. I'm going to let this sit until it is really 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 cool. So probably about 15-20 minutes. 
and then we will do the big reveal. Okay, it is time for our big reveal. I'm gonna move the mug press out of the way now that it's also cool. And I like to keep it unplugged unless I'm using it. So move that out of the way. All right, so now I'm just gonna start unwrapping everything. Hey, here we go. Oh, that looks so good. And on this side. Wow, that looks great. I've got like a slight little, I don't know, I guess that was a striation in the, in the, um, transfer sheet but wow that looks great so this is the wavy edge and it looks fantastic okay well that was very successful and I hope that you um, I hope that you learned some things about the Cricut mug press and using the infusible ink sheet I will be submitting a um, tutorial on making the boxes for these so you can look forward to that coming up soon but in the meantime i hope that this was informative and inspiring to you Create something beautiful every day i'll see you in the next video and until then happy crafting thank you all so much for watching today i'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table if you're not already i'd love to have you as a subscriber and don't forget to hit that notification bell that way you'll know when new videos arrive have a great day and as always, happy crafting.